E3 2019 Day 1 Recap, and more coming up on today's episode of Lace and Tech News. Hey Gadget here, you're just in time for the latest episode of the world's only 3-in-1 show on tech, gadgets, and gaming news. That's right, this is the latest in tech news. My name is Taylor American. If you're new here, hit that subscribe and follow button right now so that you don't miss out on the latest news. But hold off on that like button if you're watching the video until you get to a section of the show that you actually like. Speaking of uh, what's not to like, um, my eye. It, well, apparently I let, I let the cat out of the bag. Um, it's an allergy. I don't know, for some odd reason, I'm reacting to some uh, pollen or something in the air. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to work on it. Um, I, I didn't punch myself, in case you're wondering. So hopefully it'll clear up soon, but it's not contagious. Everything's fine. But speaking of what's to like, oh, man, we got a lot to like. Just give a like for likes sake. We got a lot of E3 news everything recapped so far happening on day one we'll also be taking a look at opera launching a gaming browser with twitch integration uber air announcing its first international city to trial flying taxis nope not making this up i covered it before also we'll be taking a look at amazon restaurants in the u.s shutting down and call of duty modern warfare first multiplayer screenshots revealed but before we can get into all of that, <sighs> I hate every single time I press that button, I get like, I, I, I just freak out. I don't know what's going on. Speaking of what's going on, did you know that, well, Chex Quest, which was based on the Doom game engine, is a nonviolent first person shooter released in 1996 as a Chex serial promotion it's the first video game ever included as a cereal box prize question is did you know that the very first video game and video game character ever to get its own cereal i bet you have no idea donkey kong the captain crunch like cereal was quote barrels of fun for breakfast and not surprisingly the cereal itself was shaped like well you guessed it tiny barrels Moving right along to today in tech history, where we take a look back on what happened on this day, being that today is June 11th, 2019. On this day in 1978, Texas Instruments, Inc. introduced Speak and Spell, a talking learning aid for ages 7 and up. Its debut marked the first electronic duplication of the human vocal track on a single chip of silicon, which is actually pretty impressive back in the time. Speak and Spell utilized linear predictive coding to formulate a mathematical model of the human vocal tract and predict a speech sample based on previous input. It transformed digital information processed through a filter into synthetic speech and could store more than 100 seconds of linguistic sounds. And ironically enough, I know exactly what they're talking about here. If you're like, what is this Speak and Spell you talk of? Well, you're probably too young, uh, but if you're my generation or older, well, you probably understand it quite well. I bet, I bet you don't even know. The movie that I'm thinking of right now that Speak and Spell debuted in as a critical component used in the movie. You have no idea, do you? You're like, whoa, it was in a movie? Yeah, it was in a movie. Well, come on. Speak and Spell? What movie? Type in the comment section down below. I'll give you a hint. Actually, I'll give you the answer. E.T. Anyways, that's, um, <laughs> shows how old I am. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's head on over to today's feature story. All right, exciting, exciting enough. When I was recording yesterday's show, apparently Nintendo dropped their live stream press announcement. Everything was going on. So I wanted to make sure to cover that today. Today is, well, Nintendo actually wrapped up all the press conferences that were going on, and now that day one has officially kicked off and is essentially under wraps of three days, well, E3 kind of really doesn't have a lot of news to come out of it. I mean, 
outside of the journalist looking at everything and and and, and playing the video games and and talking to people and and scoring interviews and merchandise and loot and along with the gamers being there and attendees going and talking to people and 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 playing the video games and testing things out and everything that goes along with well, the fun of the event is not really much news wise um coming out um i haven't heard anything about scalebound that was a prediction i made i really hoped i heard i was going to hear something about it but i haven't heard anything so far um so that was really my only prediction i had planned for and 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 hope i mean outside of that Anyways, I should probably get into today's... You're, you're probably wondering, what the heck did you cover in Nintendo? Do I have to pause the podcast and, and video show and go look at myself? No, 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 no. Don't worry, we'll cover it. By the way, if you want access to all the articles mentioned in today's show, head on over to technewsgadget.net to get your full show notes for today. Being that Nintendo's E3 Direct is over... Um, E3 2019's press conferences have concluded. Now the fun begins of everybody looking at everything and testing it out and playing it on pristine, perfect computers that don't have any problems and are connected to base servers in the area not too far away. And is there a plane flying overhead? Anyways, that's where I, I am, not you. Um, well, there's not really much to talk about, but fortunately, Nintendo had a great stream and showed off some huge titles, including some surprises we didn't already know about. Eh, I kind of predicted a couple of those. The biggest of the bunch was undoubtedly Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel, which, well, the internet justifiably so blew up over, but there was plenty else to take in both during and after the Direct. Now, I didn't predict anything about Zelda. I don't know. So, sorry. I, I mean... <laughs> yeah, I'm okay, I'm putting down the shovel... In addition, there are a bunch of new Nintendo Switch games out right now, and even though the Direct is over, the news continues to arrive during Nintendo's Treehouse livestream. One such tidbit taught us more about Pokemon Sword and Shield's Max Raid battles. Also learned about Animal Crossing New Horizons co-op and new Amiibo figures. Without further ado, let's look at all of the announcement recaps from the E3 Nintendo Direct. So, obviously, Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel announced for Switch. It reads uh, a teaser statement that says the sequel is now in development. No release date, title, or further details announced. Also, two new Smash Ultimate DLC characters were revealed. Looks like... Wow, Banjo-Kazooie. Two-for-one character announced as a DLC for Smash. Also, Dragon Quest XI Definitive Edition release date for Switch was announced confirming it will release on September 27th. Previously, Square Enix had only confirmed a generic fall 2019 release window. Also, Luigi's Mansion 3 gameplay for Nintendo Switch debuts. We can finally get a look at video-wise gameplay trailer, um, giving Luigi his rightful time in the spotlight as he deals with the terrifying real-world problems his famous brother just doesn't have the guts to handle. Ghosts and, well, uh, lots of them. Also, seeking. Denetsu 3 Remake Trials of Mana coming in 2020 for Switch. Zelda Link's Awakening Remake Dungeon Maker mode and release date was revealed as well. Looks like it's coming on September 20th. So if you're excited about that, you can make your own custom-made dungeons and place chambers all over. Um, but obviously it's based on wherever you've explored in adventure mode, so you can't just go drag and drop random stuff in. Also, Fire Emblem Three Houses story trailer was released. So, it takes this particular game takes a Harry Potter approach to Fire Emblem's tactical role-playing choice-driven narrative formula. You can play um, as a character teacher at the Officer's Academy, depending on how... Let's see what goes from there, depending on how you pick. Also, two more Resident Evil games are coming to the Nintendo Switch. The two ports are for evil resident evil 5 and resident evil 6 no more heroes 3 announced for nintendo switch along with the trailer so let's see travis touchdown is the last hero around he now has an armored suit and a new katana and he seems to be more powerful than ever the franchise's signature humor and general outlandish tone appear to remain intact with this third game for nintendo switch uh and then there will be no more heroes 
3 detail launching in 2020. Specific date not announced yet. Also, Damon X Machina gets a release date for September 13th. Panzer Dragoon Remake announced for Nintendo Switch as well, which was a remake of Sega's classic on-rails shooter, originally released for the Sega Saturn in 1995, so it would be interesting. Also, a new Contra game was announced. Contra franchise returns this year with a new Switch game called Contra Rogue Corpse. Rogue is a third-person, behind-the-shoulder title that also features moments that are presented from a top-down perspective and from the side. You can play solo or fight against other humans with online or local multiplayer. Also, alongside that, the Contra Anniversary Collection surprise was released, so it looks like the collection is available in a Nintendo eShop starting today. The Contra Collection brings together an array of 10 classic Contra games, including the European Pro Bector games. The full collection includes Contra for Arcade and NES, Super Contra for Arcade and NES, Contra 3 Alien Wars, Contra Hard Corps, Operation C for Game Boy, and the Pro Bector versions of Contra 3 and Hard Corps. Also, new Ultimate Alliance 3 trailer includes a ton of Marvel's best characters, so looks like Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order came out with a trailer see a bunch of marvel heroes and villains that will be featured in the game including hella surter magneto who somehow gets his hands on the reality infinity stone miles morales dr octopus ghost rider electra kamala khan gwen stacy thor scarlet witch and guardians of the galaxy and the avengers the trailer also showcases the black order's main antagonist thanos will be rocking his original comic book look in the game so Looks like if you get the expansion pass, you'll gain access to characters from the Marvel Knights, X-Men, and Fantastic Four. So, you can have fun with that. Also, a new Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games trailer was shown during Nintendo Direct. One of the upcoming games the publisher showed off was a new Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. New entry will celebrate the 2020 games in Tokyo, Japan. Mario and Sonic will be joined by friends from their respective universes, and they'll compete in sports such as surfing, skateboarding, sprinting, climbing, boxing, horse racing, swimming, fencing, soccer, baseball, hurdles, long jump, <gasps> basketball, shot put, volleyball, BMX, and gymnastics. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that last one made me laugh. Um, if you know, leave a comment. Publisher Sega previously stated the game would arrive in the winter, and Nintendo has now announced it will appear exclusively on a Nintendo Switch this November. Also, here's something you guys are excited for. Spyro Reignited Trilogy is coming to Switch. It's um, being ported to Switch, and it was announced during the presentation. The game previously launched on PS4 and Xbox One, but will be making the jump finally to Switch on September 3rd. The remaster features updated versions of the first Three Spyro games, obviously 1998, 1999, and 2000s um, versions, respectively. Also, Nintendo's Cadence of Hyrule releases on Switch very, very soon. If you haven't seen Cadence of Hyrule, it's, uh, well, very interesting. The company continued spreading the love for Link and Zelda with a new trailer as well. The game will be released on June 13th, right around the corner. Made by the same folks behind Crypt of the Necro Dancer, Cadence of Hyrule is a roguelike and borrows most of its mechanics and features from Necro Dancer. Also, Alien Isolation is coming. Looks like uh, it was a little sizzle reel. Uh, looks like it will be porting Alien Isolation. Also, Animal Crossing for Switch has been delayed, but it finally has a name called Animal Crossing New Horizons, and they pushed it back to March 20th, 2020. Also, The Witcher 3 was announced for Nintendo Switch, and a lot of you are excited about that. It's the complete edition heading to Switch, and this features the game's two substantial expansions, Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine. In terms of a release date, it will be available on Switch sometime later this year. Also, Astral Chain gameplay video shows hectic action in sci-fi story. So we'll see new trailer. Glimpse of the game in action. Not really much more to follow. Also, Pokemon Sword and Shield will work with Pokeball Plus. So you remember the Pokeball shape controller that released alongside Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee? Well, that'll work on Pokemon Sword and Shield as well. Nintendo 
<laughs> if I can read, Nintendo teases that something good may happen if you bring your Pokemon with you. However, it doesn't appear you'll be able to use the Pokeball Plus as a controller for Sword and Shield. So, that's all from Nintendo's side of things. But I know that there were at least three other companies that looked and announced stuff and talked about stuff. So, um, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's get into that as well. Looks like Square Enix, they also dropped a lot of details. I know, you, you, you're probably like, how much was announced at E3? Enough to make you drool after. And according to last statistics taken, 99% of the games you're not going to be interested in buying anyways, because you're going to be broke anyways. Most of them are just teasings for trailers and then actual games coming out in 2020. So you got a couple of years to wait till then and things can change still in the interim. But yeah, Square Enix. Let's take a look at that. Well, looks like uh, Crystal Dynamics long awaited Avengers game arrives May 15th, 2020. So Marvel's Avengers, exciting, exciting. I saw the trailer for it. Looks good. You'll be able to play as five characters, Cap, Thor, Hulk, Black Widow, and Iron Man. They do not look like they do in the movies. Um, some different people play, well, you guys know who, we, who we're talking about. Troy Baker and Nolan North play Bruce Banner and Tony Stark, respectively. Square Enix said it will release content for the game over multiple years, so it looks like it'll have four-player online co-op, and every new character and map added to the game will be free. No random loot boxes are paid to win scenarios. Um, so there you go. Final Fantasy VII Remake is still episodic, in case you're wondering. The first installment will ship on March 3rd, and will include the Midgard portion of the original game, which has been expanded. It'll take up to two Blu-ray discs. Oh, yeah, yeah, and Square Enix talked quite a bit about how the battle system will work. It looks like there is a demo, which people are playing right now, at Square Enix's booth at E3. So... Along with that, Final Fantasy VIII is getting remastered. And if you were worried, it wouldn't. It'll be on PS4, Switch, Xbox One, and PC later, later this year. Romancing Saga 3 is finally leaving Japan. So if you guys are all excited about that, the classic Super NES role-playing game is getting a cool-looking remake. It's coming to PS4, Vita, Switch, PC, Xbox One, iOS, and Android. Also leaving Japan is Saga Scarlet Grace, another RPG series that came out in Japan on Vita. It's heading here to the US, finally on Switch, PS4, Steam, iOS, and Android. It'll have the subtitle Ambitions here, and it looks like there's um, more information coming soon about that. Outriders is a new shooter from People Can Fly. It's coming in summer 2020. It's a one to three player cooperative shooter from the makers of Gears of War Judgment. Square Enix calls it a journey across a dark and desperate sci-fi world in search of a source of a mysterious signal. It'll talk more about the game coming out this winter. It'll be for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Let's see. Also, Oni Naki will be available on August 22nd, 2019. It's the latest from Tokyo RPG Factory. War of the Visions is a new follow-up to the mobile game Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. Currently in development, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition will be coming out this winter. It was originally 2019, but now it's been pushed all the way to winter. Not really a delay, but we never really knew 2019 was going to pop up. It's also coming to mobile phones in addition to Switch and the PlayStation 4. Also, The Last Remnant Remastered is available starting today on Switch. It was released for PS4 at the end of last year. Square Enix Collective will also publish Circuit Superstars in 2020. It's a top-down automobile racing game, formerly known as Apex Racing League. Obviously, they probably had to change the name there, so uh, Circuit Superstars 2020. Also, Kingdom Hearts 3 is finally getting a DLC called Remind coming this winter, just in case you missed it. That's what Square Enix covered. So, let's head on over to Poseidon. Bethesda, did you guys mess up? I don't know, did we? I don't know, it looks like we dropped a bunch of games and flubbed on a couple of them, and I don't know what the heck's going on. What about the rest of them? I don't know. Well, let's find out. Bethesda, they made their announcements at E3. What happened? So, a whole bunch of stuff. Ghostwire Tokyo is the next game from 
Shinji Mikami's studio. New kind of action adventure game. It's not survival horror. It takes place in Tokyo. Don't know many much more about it, but I guess they have a teaser trailer here for you guys. By the way, if you're like, where do I find the links to all, all the you know videos? Because you're looking at stuff right now on the screen. Yes, I'm recording this as a video uh, right now. So if you're listening, you're totally missing out. YouTube.com forward slash tech news gadget. But yeah, we got links to the articles that have the trailers and everything else you guys want to possibly drool over. Just don't do it over your keyboard or you'll fry the circuits over it. Um, over at technewsgadget.net. Just go to the show notes for today's episode. Ooh, Death Loop. Looks like we'll be coming out a new game with a mind-bending story and meticulously designed levels. Like Dishonored, it'll all be about playing the way you want to play. Not much more besides the trailer. Also, Doom Eternal, I know I covered that yesterday, coming out on November 22nd. In this ultimate power fantasy, you'll go not only to hell but to heaven. It'll have a multiplayer mode called Battle Mode. Two-player controlled demons versus one player controlled Doom Guy. A first-person fighter game. Also, Fallout is uh, had a rough time. Fallout 76, specifically, had a rough launch. It's looking forward to the future, trying to, you know, pull off bad stuff that happened in the past. It's like, well, couldn't you just launch the game properly the first time? Well, it's getting a free new update that will be adding NPCs called Wastelanders. It'll add actual computer-controlled human NPC characters with full dialogue trees this time and a new main quest that'll be coming out this fall and the update is called nuclear winter also if you guys are you know wondering about fallout 76 is it worth it not worth it as a game i want to play or not well you can start playing for free starting yesterday well the 10th it goes from june 10th to the 17th if you don't have any money that's great you can play the game You'll be able to do that between, well, now and June 17th. It's also getting a Battle Royale mood, mood, mode, type, I don't know, uh, because obviously it needs a a 52-player Battle Royale mode born from the Fallout universe. So uh, a sneak peek of this will be available during the free-to-play period. Also, Elder Scrolls Blades is coming to Switch aka switch blades as they called it on stage there was a lot of toss up between that like what do you mean by switch blade you talking about thanos you talking about the butterfly one on like um uh pacific rim no i'm not talking about it i'm talking about a stupid video game well the mobile game will be coming to nintendo system with joy con motion controls this fall it'll be free to play cross play and cross progression with the mobile version so if you've been playing on the phone you can pick it up where you left off on the switch so be interesting Elder Scrolls Online is getting a dungeon DLC adventure called Scalebreaker. Also, the Elder Scrolls Legends next expansion will be available on June 27th called Moons of Elsewhere. Bethesda is also still currently hard at work on Elder Scrolls 6. That's all they can really say about it. It's also hard at work on Starfield. It didn't have anything else to say about that, and they're working really, really hard. Also, Wolfenstein is going to have a big July Wolfenstein Cyberpilot is a VR game coming this July and will put you in the role of a hacker in the French Resistance. It's a co-op shooter in which you play as BJ Blackowitz's twin daughters, and that's coming on July 26th. The ID software classic Commander Keen is also coming back, a classic Saturday morning cartoon in a free-to-play mobile game form. Modern take on a very old ID side-scroller starring both Billy and Billy, uh, the children of the old school Commander Keen. So it's not a 2D side scroller, but sort of an item based action puzzle game where you build contraptions to move through levels. It's got its own theme song, Soft Launch, and that's with air quotes, will be coming this summer on iOS and Android. Also, the fan on my computer stopped working. Hang on. Is it working? Yes, now it is. Rage 2. For those of you who are playing, finally get the new expansion called Rise of the Ghosts. New places to go, new things to shoot on and shoot at, um, or shoot from. It'll be out later this year. And Bethesda is also introducing new software tech for game streaming called Orion. It is software developed by ID and implemented at the game engine level that lets games stream with a much lower latency. It's supposed to help players stream games at max settings 
even if your family is sucking up all the bandwidth. Or if you live far away from a data center, you'll be able to test it out by joining the Doom Slayers Club at slayersclub.com. There you go. Ubisoft, you're up. Okay, so Ubisoft. Whew. Well, looks like uh, Watch Dogs Legion will be coming out on March 6th. 2020 <laughs> oh gosh it's it's hilarious um it's a new action adventure with a beautiful look uh called gods and monsters and a 15 dollar per month subscription i'll get you access to over 100 different ubisoft games um as a highlight reel um but yeah pff. let's see it looks like you can take control of an entire team of resistance agents from your standard bald chiseled men all the way to little old ladies a fascinating hook you can actually recruit and play as anyone you see <laughs> in the game also gods and monsters if you saw that teaser of this beautiful new adventure game oh man it looks just like breath of the wild in which you fight mythical creatures it's a storybook adventure about a forgotten hero on a quest to save the greek gods coming february 25th 2020 and also well you probably heard about it you play plus if you pay 15 dollars a month um u.s dollars you'll finally have access to your own game subscription library of over 100 Ubisoft games and all of their DLCs. It will include early access and new releases like Watch Dogs Legion. It'll launch on September 3rd, and in 2020, it'll be playable on Google Stadia. Also, Roller Champions is a skill-based team PvP sports game. Interesting concept. I can see them borrowing a lot of elements from uh, Rocket League. Um... But like rollerblade type thing, so I'm kind of interested to see what exactly is going to go on. They have a gameplay trailer that goes along with it. You'll be able to pre play a pre alpha demo for the next few days on PC. Also, for those of you wondering about Rainbow Six, well, Quarantine is the next version to come out. It's a three player tactical player versus enemy co op game coming in early 2020. Looks scary, almost like a horror game. We'll see how it turns out. They just drop first gameplay details. So, but if you're not really up to that and you're more up to dancing, Just Dance is still dancing. And so is we. The latest game in a series, Just Dance 2020, is coming to Switch, PS4, Xbox One, Stadia, and Wii. It, yeah, you heard that right. A Wii game in 2019. Also, a new mobile strategy game called Tom Clancy's Elite Squad will bring characters from multiple Clancy franchises together. So, you can almost put together Sam Fisher and that Rainbow Six dude, whoever else you, you want to, I guess, and team up and have fun. Also, The Division 2 will be free to play from June 13th to the 16th. The game's first major update, DC Outskirts Expedition, will kick off in July with Episode 1, sending you to places like the National Zoo. And Episode 2 that they plan on dropping this fall will send you to the Pentagon. And Episode 3 will send you back to New York City in early 2020. One more Division News tidbit. The upcoming movie directed by David Leach will be produced with Netflix. And it's going to be a little bit different, so don't expect it to be exactly what you're used to from playing in the game mode. So, yeah, if you're interested in the Division 2, well, you have June 13th to start. And you have until the 16th to play and just get a taste, get a feel for the Division 2. See if it's a game you want to enjoy. And then, obviously, if it is, well... Good for you. You finally have the DLCs coming up like <laughs> a couple weeks later. Also, Assassin's Creed Odyssey will be getting Story Creator and Discovery Tour modes. So, yeah, you can make your own Assassin's Creed missions, including dialogue and branching pathways, and share it with others. It's an open beta starting today. Discovery Tour lets you wander ancient Greece unhindered by enemies, learning all about its history. And, man, let me tell you, they did a good job researching and looking into everything. So... Looking forward to that. Rainbow Six Siege's next season, Operation Phantom Sight, will be out today as well. For Honor has a new limited time event called Shadows of the Hitokiri, available all this week. Adventure Time is finally crossing over with Brawlhalla, so Jake Finn and Princess Bubblegum will be added to the game as playable characters, plus a new buddy match type where you can play two characters at once. The update is available today. They're playable for free until June 25th, and then they're going to go behind a little loot box paywall, and you'll have to pay for it, so uh, Ubisoft, stupid. Anyways, 
Also, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Actors are working with Ubisoft on a TV comedy about video game development. So, <laughs> Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet is a television show that he and castmate Charlie Day are putting together with Ubi. It'll be a comedy for Apple TV Plus about game development. Uh, just put it on YouTube, Red. Please, not Apple TV Plus. This stupid plus signs. Anyways, in any case, you're all wondering um, the thing that kind of summed it all up on stage for Ubisoft as it was. Well, John Bernthal brought a dog on stage. Now, uh, the dog, not the John, uh, apparently talked about the upcoming Ghost Recon Breakpoint that's coming October 4th. The game will include AI teammates for solo players as part of its post-launch plan. It'll also have a, an official community for Ghost Recon fans called Ghost Recon Delta Company. The dog will launch a beta of Ghost Recon Breakpoint on September 5th, so there you go. That's your day one recap of everything heading out on E3. Well, let's get on to the rest of the news for today. And I know I kind of have to rush through all the rest of this because E3 just takes up everything in terms of time, but yes, Opera is launching a gaming browser with Twitch integration. Now, you might be wondering, what is a gaming browser? Opera, uh, PM, Majeki, Kosemba says in the opening of the Opera GX introduction video, well, fair question. First thought when the Norwegian browser company mentioned a concept was something kind of akin to like Google Stadia with remote game streaming? No. Turns out a gaming browser, in this instance at least, is more about providing a custom browser for PC gamers rather than a browser that does the heavy lifting for gaming itself. Instead, the system is more interested in minimizing system requirements as gamers game. So the browser's central feature is the GX control panel, which lets users determine how much of the system CPU and RAM are allotted to the browser. Now, the idea being that gamers can say stream content from Twitch while playing without slowing their computer to a crawl. Obviously, for those of us who've been streaming for a while, are quite familiar with the frustrations of trying to have a web browser open and then play a video game as well and going, why is it so slow? Well, this, um, Browser is supposed to take care of that. Running a game might require a lot of effort from your machine, even more so if you're streaming while you play. And it was, let's see, announcement was a release tied to today's E3 announcement. Before Opera GX, gamers often shut down their browsers in order to not slow down their gaming experience. We came up with the GX control feature to make people's games run more smoothly without requiring them to compromise on what they do on the web. And look at that. They got a video that goes along with it. So if you guys are interested in that, uh, they got more information for you. It's called Opera GX Gaming Browser. So interesting stuff there. If Opera does does it right and they play their cards right, well, <laughs> Microsoft Edge might just be a thing of the past. Thank goodness. Also, some gadget news. Well, Uber Air is announcing the first international city to trial flying taxis. And if you're like, I've never heard about this Uber doing flying taxis. Yeah, I covered this, like, months ago. You, you guys should be current on the news, or at least you should be watching this show. Um, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, and if you're not new here, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you a little bit of leeway this time. I cover all this interesting articles and stuff, and I look for all this interesting news for you guys. So, if there's something I'm missing out, let me know, and I'll be sure to keep you current about that, but, well... Uber has announced the first international city it's flying taxis one day might be buzzing over. The Australian city of Melbourne will join Los Angeles and Dallas as the third official pilot city for Uber Air, the rideshare company's ambitious project to transport people in short distances via the skies. Test flights are expected to start in 2020 with commercial operations aimed for as soon as 2023. Uber claims trips will be priced the same as an UberX ride over the same distance, but we'll see how that obviously all sorts itself out. Definitely very interesting. They have an interesting concept photos of some skyports. This, coupled with Melbourne's unique demographic and geospatial factors and culture of innovation and technology, makes it perfect third launch city for uber air so they're tested out see how it goes the pitch obviously for uber air is to reduce road congestion so yeah i'm definitely excited to see how this all works out moving on to some more news amazon restaurants in the u.s is shutting down and in case you're wondering like 
Huh? What? Yeah, well, following November's closure of Amazon's restaurant delivery business in London, the company is now shutting down operations in the U.S. The service, which was launched back in fall of 2015, was designed to give Prime members another perk, a way to order meals, not just products and groceries, through the e-commerce giant. But, obviously, it kind of got squashed by all the competition going on, including Grubhub, Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Deliveroo in London, among others, and in some cases, they would even discount their services in order to win market share. Amazon, meanwhile, has largely failed to establish itself as a significant player in restaurant delivery in both market share and consumer mind share. And it's not the first name people think of when they're looking to order food or lunch or dinner or whatever, and the logistics of delivering hot meals in timely fashion uh, introduces a whole new set of concerns that go beyond Amazon's core focus areas, which is probably a good thing. So uh, Amazon restaurant... Um, We'll also be shuttering workplace lunch delivery service Daily Dish. So they made the decision to exit to focus more on its growing grocery delivery business, obviously. So in case you never heard about it, don't worry. Um, you won't have to worry about it. You can you can go enjoy your Grubhub, your Uber Eats, your DoorDash, your Deliveroo, and uh, Amazon can just deliver groceries to your door. Sounds good. Sounds good. And finally, we got some... Gaming news to wrap up the whole gaming news thing going on today. Call of Duty Modern Warfare first multiplayer screenshots have been re revealed at E3 2019. So they had E3 Calcium 2019. First image shows a player in a full ghillie suit complete with a silenced sniper rifle. Infinity Ward's new engine allows for dynamic cloth. So when the ghillie suit moves, the rest of the suit moves more realistically the character is also wearing a veil over their head and as the character moves so does every part of the clothing and suit so really enjoying the engine here the second image showed and teased the return of the juggernaut suit and special ops to call of duty modern warfare infinity ward art director joel emsley also discussed he asked for early on heavy metal music to start playing as you near a juggernaut as a soldier inside it shows it as his music of choice on the battlefield. Other details were revealed during the panel, including that while some characters are returning from 2007's Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, all the voice actors are new. They also further discussed their new engine that took over five years to create, which allows for things such as the caliber of a bullet determining how and if it can penetrate a wall and go through the other side. So, while the first previews of the game discussed the smaller, more intense settings in Modern Warfare, they want fans to rest easy knowing that there are still larger scale sections of the campaign speaking of the campaign you'll play half of the story as sergeant kyle garrick a former british army officer who will work alongside returning character Car captain price you should remember him different character to the original but will honor what made him so memorable the second half will be centered around a cia agent named alex who embeds with local forces in the middle east and is signed to work with another commander farah who is a corollary of captain price so excited about that call of duty modern warfare will be released on october 25th 2019 on ps4 xbox one and pc and will feature full cross play across all platforms so yeah exciting exciting stuff oh man that was just a lot of news to cover i mean when e3 shows up it just shows up so if you guys are excited about anything you wanted to talk about anything if you had any questions be sure to let us know down in the comment section down below or you could always send us a message on twitter at tech news gadgets so yeah i think with that that wraps it all up so thanks for tuning in guys new episodes every weekday for this week at least next week remember i'll be back out on vacation but shows will resume as normal the following week the latest in tech news can be found on every major platform including apple Spotify, Google, YouTube, Stitcher, Overcast, and more. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, let us know by clicking that like button and by leaving a comment. Also, double check that you are subscribed so that you don't miss the next episode. I'm your host, Taylor Merrick, and remember, for the latest in tech, gadget, and gaming news, visit technewsgadget.net. Pretty much, keep being awesome, guys, and I'll see you on the flip side.